I, I, this is first of all my first time to come to Romania and it's also my big honor to be the first invited uh, guest from Asia. Uh, this Congress is really amazing, you know. Uh, I have seen, you know, uh, excellent participation from delegates. I have looked into some of the topics. I think they are really very updated and also including state-of-the-art information. And, you know, I have attended some sessions, even in my sessions. I think the presentation has been very high standard and also uh, very high scientific value as well. And, and I also find it very uh, intriguing because it tries to cover or not only pure cardiology areas, but also cardiology practice in relation to other subspecialties, including endocrinology, such as diabetes, uh, uh, pulmonary areas, and so on. I think that there is a very good bridge between cardiology and other specialties. Yes, this is an area that I think, uh, you know, uh, in the world, it has been gradually getting attention. In particular, you know, the American Heart Association actually putting a lot of effort in emphasizing the importance of cardiovascular disease in women. Uh, it is uh, making perfect sense because uh, female gender has been kind of, you know, um, not well represented uh, in clinical studies. And even the occurrence of cardiovascular disease in female has been, um, you know, overlooked in certain extent. For example, there might be myth, uh, you know, myths believe that um, uh, coronary artery disease, you know, is only more common in male gender, which is actually not true. Now, with the increase in the longevity uh, in, in, in the general population and in many countries, I think including Asia and here in Romania, uh, female will be the group who actually suffer a lot of uh, uh, aging related diseases. And secondly, um, you know, there has been a lack of uh, data from female gender in terms of treatment, especially in many clinical trials. Women are not well represented in the clinical studies. Therefore, I think it's a very important aspect to emphasize on the prevention of cardiovascular disease in women, as well as emphasizing uh, focusing therapy for female gender that sometimes may be different from male. Yes, I'm involved in a session on heart failure, heart failure with preserved ejection fashion, uh, which is previously called the diastolic heart failure. Uh, this is an area with a disease that you know has been uh, not very well characterized, although a lot of studies has, have been done. But in terms of the diagnosis, in particular, it's not that clear. So I'm actually presenting a talk uh, on the diagnosis of this condition. Uh, I share some of my experience, in particular with the fact that heart failure with preserved ejection fashion may not be a single entity, a single disease. It might be a spectrum uh, of, you know, of under the heart failure in different severity. So I believe those patients with heart failure with preserved e ejection fashion will be sitting in the middle. They, have, they are dominant by the presence of diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle. And yet, we have found that at least half of these patients will have subclinical systolic dysfunction. So therefore, it might be a spectrum of less severe heart failure in a sense. Uh, we also understand that uh, there, therefore, uh, traditional therapy for systolic heart failure may not be very effective in these patients with half pep So I think more, more work needs to be done. And also we have presented some of our works that um, these patients with half pep they actually have uh, dynamic myocardial dysfunction. That means their myocardial contractile and relaxation reserve will be reduced. And that will be revealed if we subject this patient to stress tests such as uh, dobutamine stress echocardiography. They will have blunted increase in the systolic and the early diastolic velocities. And also there will be hidden mechanical dyssynchrony both systolic and diastolic dyssynchrony in these patients. Therefore, uh, stress testing could be a very important aspect of assessing myocardial function in these patients with half pep in the future. So first of all, I would like to congratulate the Romanian Society of Cardiology for organizing the 50, 50, uh, 53rd Annual Scientific Congress. This is a highly successful meeting and also with uh, very high standard uh, science and clinical value. 
I'm sure this is a very special and unique educational value. Uh, as I learned, this is not only to cardiologists, but also to physicians, uh, you know, and also those special specialists involving cardiovascular medicine, such as endo endocrinologists, as, as well as pulmonary physicians. So I think this is a highly uh, innovative way of education because traditionally we only bring cardiologists together and now I think the Romanian Society of Cardiology is setting a very good scene of bringing other related experts together and work as a team for maximal benefit for our patient care. So this is truly um, uh, amazing and also su uh, successful. And I think, you know, uh, the, the meeting is very high in the standard I have also met many good friends here and also start to know, you know the, the country and also the practice here. I definitely would love to come back and also would like to set up more co sustainable collaboration uh, with colleagues in this part of the world in order to actually bring a better patient care and also perform academic research so that we can also advance patient care in the near future.